According to recent reports, protests have erupted in several cities across China, with huge crowds flocking to the streets to express their frustration with the government. Protesters shouting slogans like overthrow the totalitarian government and we demand change now. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Protests erupt throughout China, with outraged protesters shouting, overthrow the totalitarian government. The Chinese regime is facing growing discontent among the elderly as it implements a series of medical insurance reforms in response to the current financial crisis. More and more regions in China have completed local medical insurance reforms, and many areas have reduced the medical insurance subsidy for retired personnel by more than half. These changes have caused unrest and protests across the country. Since December of last year, retirees in Guangzhou have had their medical insurance coverage severely curtailed, which has sparked a movement to protect their rights. According to Sound of Hope, on February 8, retired residents in Wuhan, Hubei province, took to the streets in a protest march to express their discontent with the government's medical insurance reform policies. The protesters, holding umbrellas and braving the rain, gathered in front of the Wuhan municipal government to demand a response from the mayor before February 8. If their demands were not met, they threatened to hold the Wuhan Retirees Medical Insurance Rights Protection Conference and the Wuhan People's Republic of China Retired Military Medical Insurance Rights Protection Conference at Zhongshan Park on February 15. True to their word, on February 15, tens of thousands of elderly protesters gathered in Wuhan's Zhongshan Park to conduct what has come to be known as the Silver-Haired Revolution. Along with Zhongshan Park and Liberation Avenue, a sizable crowd of protesters also gathered at the entrance of Wuhan Union Hospital. The protest was peaceful at first, but the crowd continued to grow, leading the authorities to deploy a large number of police officers to confront the elderly protesters. During the confrontation, several elderly protesters fell to the ground and were unable to get up. The protesters sang the international song and unity is strength to express their dissatisfaction. Some protesters were heard shouting, down with the Communist Party. According to Zhang Hai, a Wuhan resident, retired people protested the government's so-called medical reform last week but didn't get a satisfactory response. He said, today, they protested again. Since last night, many government officials have told citizens not to go to Zhongshan Park and Shi Road. This morning, many areas in Wuhan were closed off, but many people still came out, ready to gather here and march along the Yangtze River Bridge. There were a lot of cops on the scene, and several subway entrances and exits were closed. At the same time, the mobile network signal was disrupted, and the crowd dispersed. Many people were arrested, according to witnesses. According to Mr. Chen, a Wuhan resident, the city's medical insurance reform, which went into effect on February 1, resulted in a huge cut in health care coverage, with many elderly people's monthly medical subsidy being lowered from over 260 yuan to 80 yuan. However, a circulated document titled Comparison Table of Adjustments to Wuhan City's Basic Medical Insurance for Employees includes a note indicating that the major adjustment this time is to Wuhan employees' basic medical insurance and that Wuhan public officials' medical insurance is unaffected. The sharp contrast between the high-level, unlimited free medical care given to privileged individuals and the extreme inequality faced by retired workers was once again brought to light by this. According to videos circulated by netizens, on February 15, citizens of Dalian were taking concrete actions to support their colleagues in Wuhan's protest. To manage the protesters, Dalian authorities mobilized a significant number of both uniformed and plainclothes police officers. The surrounded protesters began to sing the international song loudly. According to the person who uploaded the video, the CCP drained the medical insurance fund, leading to local financial ruin, and then employed tactics that negatively impacted the public. Subsequently, a nationwide rights defense movement emerged, with tens of thousands of retirees expressing their displeasure and protesting in cities like Wuhan and Dalian. On the same day, a large-scale protest by retirees from the Anshan Iron and Steel Factory erupted in Anshan, Liaoning. In a video, it can be seen that the local police are arresting protesters and loading them onto buses as other buses stand by in the background. 
The situation is constantly changing, and it is unclear how the government will react to the protests. However, the Chinese people are becoming increasingly frustrated and are demanding change. Although Weibo has censored this news, videos and photos have gone viral on Twitter, sparking discussion among netizens. A hospital bed in China during the COVID outbreak can be decided by red packets. According to Reuters, CCP's Zero COVID policy, which was enacted in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, has overwhelmed the healthcare system due to a shortage of medical resources. During this period, personal relationships and red packets for doctors have become determining factors in whether COVID-19 patients are admitted to hospitals for treatment or given a hospital bed. Relationships and red packets were shortcuts to seeking medical treatment during the peak of the epidemic. Citing three individuals who obtained medical services through personal connections and bribery, as well as seven doctors from six cities who diagnosed patients in overcrowded emergency rooms, a report highlights how privileged patients were able to reduce their waiting time at hospitals by using their connections, bribery, or paying intermediaries. The doctors also revealed that patients could contact them through government officials or individuals who have connections to medical staff. A doctor in Shanghai said, the higher the level of personal connections, the better the medical treatment, and the easier it is to jump the queue. If you know the hospital dean, you won't have to worry about not having a bed. Despite efforts by Beijing authorities to combat the practice of doctors accepting bribes, government oversight has mainly focused on pharmaceutical companies rather than the red envelopes given by medical patients. Approximately 10 years ago, doctors were prohibited from accepting red envelopes containing cash as part of Beijing's extensive medical reform. In April 2022, the National Health Commission of the Chinese Communist Party called for stronger law enforcement against doctors who receive red envelopes. However, medical experts and doctors claim that the practice of using red envelopes, personal connections, or contacts to gain medical convenience still exists. Yin Zhong Huang, a senior fellow for global health at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, said, In China, it is very common to use personal connections to seek high-quality medical services. As demand for medical resources increases during the peak of the COVID-19 epidemic, personal connections may become an even more crucial resource in China. Yin Zhong Huang said, Many severely symptomatic rural patients and COVID-19 patients do not proactively seek medical treatment, instead, they just die at home. A doctor in Shanghai noted that having connections to government officials or medical professionals makes it easier for patients to secure hospital beds. The higher your connections and experience, the better treatment you receive, or the easier it is to jump the queue. If you know the leaders of the hospital, then you won't have a problem getting a bed. However, the National Health Commission of the Communist Party of China and the National Center for Disease Control and Prevention did not respond to requests for comment on the issue. What are the underlying causes? According to Reuters, Chinese medical experts and doctors have revealed that Beijing's medical policies have resulted in chronically low salaries for many doctors, contributing to a shortage of talent and longer waiting times for patients seeking medical treatment. The National Bureau of Statistics of China reported that in 2020, only 546,657 new medical personnel were added, the lowest in any year since 2017. An intern in Shanghai remarked, when you consider the long hours of work and training in medical expertise, how much is 10,000 to 15,000 yuan, about $1,460 to $2,200? Usually, Doctors are only eligible for this level of salary when they are in their 30s. It's humiliating. In smaller Chinese cities, new doctors reportedly earn only $440 to $730 per month, according to two doctors from a small city in Sichuan province. Yin Zhong Huang has noted that for many hospital doctors in mainland China, gray income, or red envelopes received from patients, is the primary source of income rather than their basic salary. Although Beijing has initiated measures to curb corruption in the medical industry, the issue of low salaries remains. During the COVID-19 outbreak in China, social media was inundated with messages from intermediaries who demanded 4,000 to 5,000 yuan to arrange a hospital bed, 
adding to the challenges faced by patients seeking medical treatment. China has an unequal distribution of medical resources. According to an article by Chinese writer Fu Guiyong, hospitals have become a place of grievances and hatred for patients due to the phenomenon of red envelopes. In the article, he criticized the current medical and health system, which he described as being established on a hierarchical and hereditary basis. According to Guiyong, big and small dignitaries, as well as their family members, enjoy the best and second best medical resources, while employees and residents in large, medium, and small cities receive corresponding medical services based on their status and position in this centralized society. Finally, the powerless and vulnerable population in the lower levels of the city and the vast majority of rural areas and farmers are excluded. Columnist Yuan Bin of the Epic Times has noted that people hate nothing more than accepting red envelopes when it comes to the current state of medical ethics. Many doctors link their enthusiasm and attitude towards treating patients to whether they receive red envelopes, and some unscrupulous doctors and nurses even demand them. Although some patients do not face overt or covert demands, most seriously ill patients still send red envelopes because it has become an unspoken rule between doctors and patients. Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We will keep reporting on the COVID surge in China, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to get the latest videos. And thank you for tuning in.